we need to talk about palmas. We need to talk about your palmas, my palmas, everyone's palmas. I will never repeat it enough. In flamenco, palmas are fundamental for everyone. It is the main and first expression of rhythm, of the compass. So let's have a little overview of important things to know before we start clapping like crazy. Everybody clap yo! Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, you know that everyone must know how to play good palmas, even the public. I'm not going to ask you to sing, I'm not going to ask you to play the guitar, even if you should at least a little. But palmas are essential. We all need to become better palmeros and palmeras, for example, to participate in fiestas, in juergas, in parties. Or to be able to accompany the other, accompany the dancer, accompany the guitarist, the singer, and above all, because it will help develop a very strong physical sense of rhythm that will automatically infuse into our baile, our toque, our cante, everything. Interesting, right? Playing and practicing palmas and compas, it's like a permanent loop. You have to understand, internalize and feel the compass to be able to play it well with palmas. And how you do this? Playing a lot of palmas. So the more you play palmas, the better you play palmas and the better you understand and feel compass itself. At first glance, it seems easy to clap your hands, right? But here we are not talking about just clapping, but about making music. From making noise to making meaningful sounds to making music. Clap, 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 sonigeti. Clap, 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 clap. So, like everything else in flamenco, when playing palmas, we also have to speak the flamenco language, understand the structures and unfolding of the cante parts, the guitar parts, the baile parts, in order to be able to anticipate them follow the cues, the llamadas, remates, cierres, in order to interact with the others and follow the dynamics, the speed, the acceleration, the intention, the texture, the moment. Palmas have a language. a role, responsibilities, but also a great diversity, enormous creative and expressive possibilities. So once again, what we don't want here is to oversimplify. But before all that, let's start talking about what playing Palmas really means. Hi, I'm Steve Reich. In 1972, I composed a piece called Clapping Music, and all it needs is your two hands. Palmas are a musical instrument, a body percussion. And the advantage of this instrument is that you always have them with you. There is no need for an external, fragile, bulky, expensive instrument. Anyone can play palmas anywhere, anytime. If nobody around is sleepy. And this is why clapping is so present and important in so many musical cultures. Palmas have a dual role, that of rhythmic support for the others. They are the base, the rhythmic foundation on which the other will rely. They are like the drums in a band. And that of a musical instrument that brings a specific sound, a specific texture, a layer that must blend with the rest in a coherent whole. The sound of the palmas is a very big part of the overall musical aesthetic of flamenco. It is important to make the distinction between two kinds of palmas, two different ways of playing palmas. Here I quote Claude Worms, who in a very interesting article, I put the link in the description, talks about 
unintentional palmas, which singers mark more or less discreetly to guide their phrasing. Cuando remedio lo tenga, cuando tu remedio lo tenga, arriba, que te corte el cirujano la cauta. And intentional palmas, intended explicitly for the accompaniment of a performance as a percussion instrument. Here we are going to talk about intentional palm those that we do knowingly and that are a very important active part of the soundscape of the moment. I know that most of the time when we talk about people who play palmas, we talk about palmeros, like male palmeros, but there are also palmeras. So no palmistic discrimination. The palmeros and palmeras in a cuadro have a big responsibility. Maybe not that one that seems to be here more for decoration. <laughs> but palmeros are musicians and that's why they are professional palmeros. Very often we see two or more people playing palmas at the same time because palmas sound much better when there are multiple palmeros. And there are very famous couple, like El Bogote y El Electrico. <laughs> or El Bogote y El Torombo. <laughs> Los Meis. <laughs> El Boy Chicharito. <laughs> Luis Cantarote y Carlos Grillo. But even if they are professional palmeros, everyone must have good palmas. Did I say that already? The dancers are very often very good palmeros because they are very good rhythmicians. Remember, I just mentioned El Torombo. He's a dancer, first of all. Guitarists also, often they have a very nice palma sound. I don't know why, maybe because they know that palmas that are too loud are just bothering the guitarist. Many times you see singers stop playing the palmas while singing in order to concentrate all their energy and emotions on the cante. But singers who sing for the baile also have to be able to play palmas while singing if there are none or not enough palmeros on stage. <laughs> Playing palmas is much more than just having two different palmas patterns that you don't really understand, that you can play more or less straight, more or less clean, more or less regular, with more or less intention, or just based on your intuition. That's why we must practice palmas like any other instrument in order to master all these different aspects. The sound, the intensity, the speed, the regularity or stability, the intention and the compass itself. As you might already know, there are two main basic types of sound or timbre for the palma. The palmas claras or abiertas and the palmas sordas or cerradas. Finding your own palma sound takes time and practice. It's not easy to find the right balance in order to provide the minimum effort for a clean, crisp and precise sound, especially for the clara. We don't want to hear the sound of flesh against flesh. 
but rather like a bubble bursting. The sordas are quite easier, but still you have to work on it to have this very compact, very dense sound. We'll talk more about the palmas technique in other videos, but just a few things here. To have an effective movement that doesn't make you tired too quickly, and to have a nice and even sound, it's important to keep these things in mind. In general, there is one hand that strikes and the other hand that receives. The receiving hand, in my case the left hand, but it can be the right hand for you, doesn't matter, is more or less fixed, okay? We are not applauded like this. So try to make small movements from the elbow or even from the wrist. Try to keep the fingers as natural as possible, okay? Not too tense, not bent. Don't keep them wide open. Don't keep them too close, just natural. And practice on your own until you find this very nice crisp sound, the sensation of bursting bubble wrap. Claras, sordas, it's a bit too binary because all the variants are possible in between depending on what you want and what you need. For example, if I play palmas claras with or without the pinky, it changes the sound. It's very subtle, right? But sometimes, like in a recording, it can make a big difference. Or just by modifying the hollow part of your palm here, you can find a new palette of texture and sounds. You can almost play a melody. Almost. So many possibilities to adapt to the situation and to what you want. In addition to the type of sound, we also have a volume knob to our palmas. The word of palmas is a word of contrast and you'll find all types of intensities from almost inaudible to very, very loud with everything possible in between. Here again, you have to adapt the volume to what is happening. If the moment is quiet and soft, or on the contrary, explosive and loud, the needs are obviously not the same. But there is not one rule, it also depends on personal taste and choices. Personally, I really enjoy contrasting palmas. They give life, contrast, color, and not just a simple constant beat. In general, there is no need to clap like you were deaf. So let's say that if the volume of the palmas is covering everything else for too long, maybe there is a balance problem. Also avoid partitioning into palmas sordas are low and slow, and palmas claras are fast and loud. You can have fine and soft and slow claras, and fast and loud sordas. Now entering more the musical aspect. We must be aware of the pulse and always seek stability and consistency. And this is basic for music in general, not only for flamenco, right? The speed or tempo may vary depending on the situation. Sometimes we can change the tempo gradually or abruptly in a cante or a toque or a baile, but most of the time the tempo is supposed to be stable and steady. We have to feel, to listen, to help and support, but not to disturb, not to rush, not to drag, not to stumble. All this makes that the compass camina, it's walking, it's going nicely. That's why it's so fundamental to practice palmas with el Tito. And that doesn't mean that will become like mechanical, robotic, monotonous. On the contrary, it will give us rhythmic freedom. Because if the compass is lame, then it's difficult for everyone. The intention is a direction from somewhere to somewhere else from low to loud, from slow to fast, from slow and low to fast and loud. Again, everything is possible depending on what's happening. A subida, for example, is a moment of a baile where the palmas have to follow this double intention, increasing speed and intensity, volume. And the more we are aware of it, the better we can express it, the more we can play with it, manipulate. I've already told you in another video this type of suida that I love, which starts out very, very low and then rises in intensity and speed very quickly. Hey. 
and ultimately the palmas are used to express the compass, the rhythmic cycle. There are traditional ways of expressing each type of compass and many times we talk about palmas patterns. But one essential thing here, do not confuse a palmas pattern with the compass itself. And I already made a video about this topic that is very important. For your own creativity, it is crucial not to see palmas patterns as indivisible and invariable loops that you have to play all the time exactly the same way. On the contrary, palmas patterns are just possible variations, options of organization of smaller Legos that you can recombine the way you want. And we'll do palmas exercises with this idea in other videos. There are infinite possibilities of playing palmas in any given palo. You can create an infinite number of combination of beats, subbeats, silences, accents, changes of intention, rhythmic cells. It all depends on our musical needs, on the context, is it toque, cante, baile, on the moment, the people, their sensitivity, their tastes, imagination, technical abilities, eras, places. If we observe the palmeros here, or here, Or here. We can clearly see that they are in very different palmistic universes, right? Yet it is the same palo por bulería. In all cases, you can be sure that these are choices, maybe unconscious, but choices on their part that correspond to their musical needs. If most of the time we like palmas with phrasing, with sonicete, with accents, Sometimes we need something else. There is a type of palmas that we call palmas lisas, the smooth palma. It's when we mark all the beats with the palmas, just the beat like what would El Tito do. Just marking the accent of the compass with the foot so that we don't lose the sense of the global cycle. This is what we do, for example, when we want to support the contrast of a dancer. Because the palmas are doing the tiempo and the dancer is doing the contrast. or in a subida and remate, and sometimes we don't even mark the accents with the foot, nothing. Just palmas lisas. And sometimes you just have to let go. Emotion is a big part of the flamenco game, right? And sometimes it has to overwhelm us. You can't keep a cool head all the time and control everything you do at every moment. At least I can't. Often before a strong cierre, the palmas become very strong, very loud, they become lisa. The jaleos come in. Because who says palmas also says jaleos, but we'll talk about jaleos another time. And the feet start to trample frantically, the guitar is about to burn, and it's part of the moment that requires this discharge of energy. And it feels good. A little fuera de control, out of control, but it only makes sense if after that we are able to go back in control, to count down. It's part of this musical overall dynamic that I talk about all the time. Tension, resolution. Tension, release. And talking about the foot, here is another very important thing about the palmas. Tocar las palmas necessarily involves another element the foot. Palmas and the foot are a tool, a musical instrument to bring music to life.
it is inseparable from the palmas if you want a grounded, solid compass. And the palmas and the foot are complementary. They express different rhythmic layers that create rhythms in two or three dimensions, as I explained in other videos. There is not one and only way to mark the foot in a specific compass, but most of the time the foot marks the accents, the strong beats, or what I like to call the heavy beats. Like in a solea type compass, the accents the 3, 6, 8, and 12, or the variation 3, 7, 8, and 12, or tango 1 and 3, or fandango 1 and 4. Tap your foot to feel the compass, to feel the ground, the tierra, the accents, the heavy beats, but also to stabilize your contratempo or to emphasize a llamada, a remate, a cierre, to follow intention. If you sing or play guitar, for example, and you practice palmas with the foot, then when you sing or play guitar, you'll have the foot and the compass ingrained in your system and your compass will be much stronger. Here again, it's not about stomping as if there is no tomorrow. Sometimes you just want to keep your foot tapping for yourself with very little or no sound at all. Sometimes you want to make it sound and sometimes you won't use it because you don't need it and because the music doesn't require it. The universe of the palmas is rich and fascinating as soon as you go a little deeper. Remember, this is all about making music with it. Whatever you do, it should be for a musical reason. Not because you forgot, not because you don't care, and not because you don't know what to do. It's not just about clapping or marking the compass or the beats. It's about listening, adaptation, interaction, respect, support, sensitivity, musicality, emotion. Practice a lot, experiment, vary the four parameters we talked about. The sound, the speed, the intensity, the intention. One after the other, together, vary the combinations on different compasses. Possibilities are endless. You also have to practice because it's a muscle training, like workout. To hold a whole macho de un baile por siria with the palmas, you need a lot of stamina. Focus your attention on the palmas, the different ways, the different sounds, the different sensitivities. Listen in palmas mode. You'll see and you'll hear a new universe open up to you. And in palma, there is alma, soul. Is it a coincidence? And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. If it helped, you can also help me by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, sharing it to the world. Please also consider supporting my work on Patreon. I leave the link in the comments. And as always, go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain all my online classes and courses and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, play Palma.